Snakes and Ladders Snakes and Ladders is an ancient Indian board game regarded today as a worldwide classic. It is played between two or more players on a game board having numbered, gridded squares. A number of ladders and snakes are pictured on the board, each connecting two specific board squares. The object of the game is to navigate one's game piece, according to die rolls, from the start to the finish, helped or hindered by ladders and snakes respectively. The game is a simple race contest based on sheer luck, and is popular with young children. The historic version had root in morality lessons, where players' progression up the board represented a life journey complicated by virtues and vices. A commercial version with different morality lessons, Shoots and Ladders, is published by Milton Bradley. The size of the grid varies, as does the exact arrangement of the snakes and ladders, with both factors affecting the duration of play. Each player is represented by a distinctly colored game piece token. A single die is rolled to determine random movement of a player's token in the traditional form of play. Snakes and Ladders originated in India as part of a family of dice board games that included Gian Chopper and Pachisi. The game made its way to England and was sold as Snakes and Ladders, then the basic concept was introduced in the United States as Shoots and Ladders by game pioneer Milton Bradley in 1943. Gian Chopper slash Janan Chopper the version associated with the Jain philosophy encompassed the concepts like karma and moksha. The game was popular in ancient India by the name Moksha Padam. It was also associated with traditional Hindu philosophy contrasting karma and kama, or destiny and desire. It emphasized destiny, as opposed to games such as Pachisi, which focused on life as a mixture of skill and luck. The underlying ideals of the game inspired a version introduced in Victorian England in 1892. The game has also been interpreted and used as a tool for teaching the effects of good deeds versus bad. The board was covered with symbolic images, the top featuring gods, angels, and majestic beings, while the rest of the board was covered with pictures of animals, flowers and people. The ladders represented virtues such as generosity, faith, and humility, while the snakes represented vices such as lust, anger, murder, and theft. The morality lesson of the game was that a person can attain salvation through doing good, whereas by doing evil one will inherit rebirth to lower forms of life. The number of ladders was less than the number of snakes as a reminder that a path of good is much more difficult to tread than a path of sins. Presumably, reaching the last square represented the attainment of moksha. When the game was brought to England, the Indian virtues and vices were replaced by English ones in hopes of better reflecting Victorian doctrines of morality. Squares of fulfillment, grace and success were accessible by ladders of thrift, penitence and industry and snakes of indulgence, disobedience and indolence caused one to end up in illness, disgrace, and poverty. While the Indian version of the game had snakes outnumbering ladders, the English counterpart was more forgiving as it contained each in the same amount. This concept of equality signifies the cultural ideal that for every sin one commits, there exists another chance at redemption. The association of Britain's snakes and ladders with India and Jian Chopper began with the returning of colonial families from one of Britain's most important imperial possessions, India. The decor and art of the early English boards of the 20th century reflect this relationship. By the 1940s, very few pictorial references to the Indian culture were found due to the economic demands of the war and the collapse of British rule in India. Although the game's sense of morality has lasted through the game's generations, the physical allusions to religious and philosophical thought in the game as presented in Indian models appear to have all but faded. There has even been evidence of a possible Buddhist version of the game existing in India during Palasena time period. In Andhra Pradesh, this game is popularly called Vaikunthapali or Paramapada Sapanapadam in Telugu. In Hindi, this game is called Sanpower Siddhi, San Siddhi in Mokshapit. In Tamil Nadu, the game is called Paramapadam and is often played by devotees of Hindu god Vishnu during the Vakunda Ekadashi festival in order to stay awake during the night. In the original game, the squares of virtue are faith, reliability, generosity, knowledge, and asceticism. The squares of vice or evil are, disobedience, vanity, vulgarity, theft, lying, drunkenness, debt, murder, rage, greed, pride, and lust. Each player starts with a token on the starting square. Players take turns rolling a single die to move their token by the number of squares indicated by the die roll. Tokens follow a fixed route marked on the game board which usually follows a boost or feed and track from the bottom to the top of the playing area passing once through every square. If, on completion of a move, a player's token lands on the lower numbered end of a ladder, 
the player moves the token up to the ladder's higher numbered square. If the player lands on the higher numbered square of a snake, the token must be moved down to the snake's lower numbered square. If a player rolls a 6, the player may, after moving, immediately take another turn, otherwise play passes to the next player and turn out the player who is first to bring their token to the last square of the track is the winner. Variance exists where a player must roll the exact number to reach the final square. Depending on the variation, if the die roll is too large, the token either remains in place or goes off the final square and back again. In certain circumstances, a player can end up further away from the final square after their move, than before it. In the book Winning Ways the authors propose a variant which they call Adders and Ladders and which, unlike the original game, involves skill. Instead of tokens for each player, there is a store of indistinguishable tokens shared by all players. The illustration has five tokens. There is no die to roll, instead, the player chooses any token and moves it one to four spaces. Whoever moves the last token to the home space wins. The most widely known edition of Snakes and Ladders in the United States is Shoots and Ladders released by Milton Bradley in 1943. The playground setting replaced the snakes, which were received negatively by children at the time. It is played on a 10x10 board, and players advance their pieces according to a spinner rather than a die. The theme of the board design is playground equipment, showing children climbing ladders and descending chutes. The artwork on the board teaches morality lessons, squares on the bottom of the ladder show a child doing a good or sensible deed, at the top of the ladder there is an image of the child enjoying the reward, squares at the top of the chutes show children engaging in mischievous or foolish behavior, on the bottom of the chute the image shows the children suffering the consequences. Black children were depicted in the Milton Bradley game for the first time in 1974. There have been many pop culture versions of the game with graphics featuring such children's television characters as Dora the Explorer and Sesame Street. It has been marketed as the classic up-and-down game for preschoolers. In 1999, Hasbro released Shoots and Ladders for PCs. In Canada the game has been traditionally sold as Snakes and Ladders, and produced by the Canada Games Company. Several Canadian-specific versions have been produced over the years, including a version substituting toboggan runs for the Snakes. With the demise of the Canada Games Company, Shoots and Ladders produced by Milton Bradley slash Hasbro has been gaining in popularity. The most common in the United Kingdom is Spears Games' edition of Snakes and Ladders, played on a 10x10 board where a single die is used. Another early British version of the game depicts the path of a young boy and girl making their way through a cartoon railroad and train system. During the early 1990s in South Africa, Shoots and Ladders games made from cardboard were distributed on the back of egg boxes as part of a promotion. Even though the concept of major virtues against vices and related Eastern spiritualism is not much emphasized in modern incarnations of the game, the central mechanism of snakes and ladders makes it an effective tool for teaching young children about various subjects. In two separate Indonesian schools, the implementation of the game as media in English lessons of fifth graders not only improved the students' vocabulary but also stimulated their interest and excitement about the learning process. Researchers from Carnegie Mellon University found that preschoolers from low-income backgrounds who played an hour of numerical board games like Snakes and Ladders matched the performance of their middle-class counterparts be showing improvements in counting and recognizing number shapes. An eco-inspired version of the game was also used to teach students and teachers about climate change and environmental sustainability. Any version of Snakes and Ladders can be represented exactly as an absorbing Markov chain since from any square the odds of moving to any other square are fixed and independent of any previous game history. The Milton Bradley version of Chutes and Ladders has 100 squares, with 19 Chutes and Ladders. A player will need an average of 39.2 spins to move from the starting point, which is off the board, to square 100. A two-player game is expected to end in 47.76 moves with a 50.9% chance of winning for the first player. Those calculations are based on a variant where throwing a 6 does not lead to an additional roll, and where the player must roll the exact number to reach square 100 and if they overshoot it their counter does not move. The phrase back to square 1 originates in the game of snakes and ladders, or at least was influenced by it. The earliest attestation of the phrase refers to the game, with all he has the problem of maintaining the interest of the reader who is always being sent back to square 1 in a sort of intellectual game of snakes and ladders. The game is a central metaphor of Salman Rushdie's Midnight's Children. 
the narrator describes the game as follows All games have morals, and the game of snakes and ladders captures, as no other activity can hope to do, the eternal truth that for every ladder you hope to climb, a snake is waiting just around the corner, and for every snake a ladder will compensate. But it's more than that, no mere carrot and stick affair, because implicit in the game is unchanging two-ness of things, the duality of up against down, good against evil. The solid rationality of ladders balances the occult sinuosities off the serpent, in the opposition of staircase and cobra we can see, metaphorically, all conceivable oppositions, alpha against omega, father against mother. Bibliography Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.